So the original RTX 4070 Ti was supposed to be the RTX 4080 12GB before the community chip shamed NVIDIA because they were fitting it with the same chip as the RTX 4070. Fast forward to 2024 and NVIDIA strikes back with this RTX 4070 Ti Super that now has an AD103 chip just like the RTX 4080. But the question is, what does it identify as? Is it gonna run like an RTX 4070-ish card? Or is it gonna give us RTX 4080-like performance at a lower cost? Let's just dive right in. Unlike the RTX 4070 Super that's going to be sold alongside its non-Super brother, the RTX 4070, the RTX 4070 Ti Super is going to replace the original RTX 4070 Ti in NVIDIA's new lineup, just like the RTX 4080 Super taking over for the 4080. With the upgrade to a cut-down AD103 chip as mentioned, comes a healthy bump in CUDA, RT and Tensor cores. We're also finally getting more VRAM at 16GB and a wider memory bus. In in fact, this card looks more like a discounted RTX 4080 than an upgraded RTX 4070 Ti. But how does all this impact actual gaming and also productivity performance? Well, before we talk about that, let's talk about this fine specimen of a graphics card. What we have here is an all-white, colorful, iGame GeForce RTX 4070 Ti Super Vulcan WOC. It has a chunky heatsink with 6 heat pipes under a 3-fan configuration that honestly does a good job keeping temps low, uh, not only for gaming but also heavier GPU workloads while also keeping very quiet. I must say that Colorful has really stepped up their game not just in terms of build quality, but also the unboxing experience. They've not only included an anti-sag support, but also an LCD screen that can either be attached to the cart itself or to a dock on your desk. A pretty cool option for an all-white build, though you'd be paying quite a bit more for all that bling compared to their lower-end models. For our test bench, we are still running our trusty i9-13900K setup from before. Though I should really beef up that storage considering how big some of these newer games are getting. Now let's take a look at the numbers kicking things off with gaming benchmarks starting with 3D Mark. In terms of pure rasterization, compared to the original RTX 4070 Ti, the Super performs 8% better on average, with more improvement in higher resolutions, probably thanks to that 16GB of VRAM. It also pulls ahead by an average of 15% over this 4070 Super, again with more uplift in higher resolutions, while losing to the 4080 by about 15% as well. Considering the 25% price gap between the 4070 Ti Super and the 4070 Super, uh, the non-Ti Super still offers better value. The 4080 is even worse bang for your buck, but that might all change with the arrival of the US dollars RTX 4080 Super. Next, we tested as many games as we could given the limited time we've had with this card. First up, Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. The single digit improvement in 1080p performance is of no significance because we're mostly going to be looking at 1440p uh, with a card like this where the 4070 Ti Super pumped up 11% more FPS than the 4070 Ti original uh, which increased to about 14% in 4K. While the 4080 still leads by quite a bit in 1440p, you'd hardly notice the difference uh, between 57 FPS and 66 FPS in 4K, which is pretty impressive given the price gap between these two cards. Resident Evil 4 showed even more impressive numbers with the 4070 Ti Super performing only up to 10% worse than the 4080, showing us the importance of having more VRAM in modern titles. Starfield again mirrors this, although I must say that even with the 4070 Super, uh, this game is completely playable in 4K. If you're playing a top-down RPG like Baldur's Gate 3 or Diablo 4 where graphics are less demanding, while having 13% more FPS over the 4070 Super is nice, you can still comfortably game in 4K with any of these newer cards. For competitive FPS players, this card is going to be future-proof until 4K 360Hz monitors drop, so yeah, overkill. 
Next, let's talk about ray tracing. If you're a graphics connoisseur like Moa, then this is probably one of the only reasons you're stuck with Team Green. In Resident Evil 4, we can see that 4K is where the 4070 Ti Super shines, once again performing only 8% worse than the 4080, while pulling ahead of the 4070 Super by a whopping 24%. Ah, so this is where they got that 25% price gap. In Cyberpunk, which is arguably more demanding, we're still seeing a pretty impressive performance jump. And again, it's more evident in 4K than in 1440p. For productivity workloads, GPU performance is gonna be a mixed bag depending on the nature of your workload. The rule of thumb is just get a GPU that is decent enough. For instance, the extra VRAM doesn't seem to make much of a difference in Premium Pro for the 4070 Ti Super over the Nun Super, but it really mattered in DaVinci Resolve where we saw a 27% jump over the original Ti. Uh, for 3D work in software like V-Ray, while the 4070 Ti is still significantly uh, better than the 4070 Super by about 15%, as usual, I will just get the most expensive card you can afford uh, because performance does scale pretty well for this type of workload. Okay, like it or not, the RTX 4070 Ti Super is here to stay. Launching at 800 US dollars like its non-super predecessor, this card might not be the shiniest one from Nvidia's mid-gen refresh. I mean, I'm personally more curious about the RTX 4080 Super coming in at 1000 US dollars, but with the RTX 4080 going out the door, this card, now with 16GB of VRAM, does feel more like the new entry-level, high-end card for 4K gaming. Of course, if you decide to slum it at 1440p, it's a good enough upgrade over the original RTX 4070 Ti. Then there's the benefit of having more VRAM for productivity tasks, depending on what software you use, of course. In fact, this card feels more like what the RTX 4070 Ti should have been when it first launched. It is now a much more solid purchase than the awkward RTX 4070 Ti original at launch. Well, minus that super awkward name, of course. I think the current lineup with this card being $200 more expensive than the 4070 Super and $200 cheaper than the 4080 Super makes a lot more sense considering the performance gap as well. Especially if we ignore the original non-Super cards that are getting replaced. But what do you think? Are you going to finally buy a 4070 Ti now that it's all souped up with 16 gigabytes of VRAM? Or would you rather just jump to Team Red if they decide to drop their prices to stay even more competitive? Let us know, leave a comment down below. And if you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to like and share. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell to see more content like this. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Mob House crew. Again, my name is Bangsawan Shane, and I will see you in the next one.